James Ben, Ryan. excitement levels are sky high among England cricket fans. Parallels being drawn with 2005. How are you feeling? And how special a summer could this be for you? Yeah, I think today, to be honest, has actually probably been the more relaxed I think the group has felt because we start tomorrow. Um, you know, every day that we've edged closer to the start of the the series, it's sort of like, oh, I wish it started tomorrow, and now that day's finally here. So, um, look, we're we're really excited to get going. Um, it's been a long time coming. Obviously, all the the build up around it from you know the media side has been going for a long time now. So, yeah, we're looking forward to getting going tomorrow. You've talked about playing a brand of cricket that inspires the next generation, that makes Test cricket attractive. Is the Ashes platform the perfect opportunity to express that? Um, well, I think what we've, what we have done over the, it's certainly the last year, is is show what, how we want to play and how we found a way that we're able to get the best out of. You know the team, but also the best out of the individuals. And um, obviously, you get asked a lot if we're going to continue to play in this way against this opposition, and we're going to continue to keep playing this way against this opposition. Opposition, and I think we've sort of made it clear that this is just how England play their cricket against any opposition. Um, because, as I say, it's it's worked more than it's not. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's any question around what we're going to go out and you know how we're going to go out and try and play our cricket even though it's against Australia. And you've named your team, Broad, Robinson, Anderson, the three seamers, no Mark Wood. What was your thinking? What did you have to weigh up? Um, look, I think when you say Broad, Robinson, Anderson, it's a pretty, pretty good three guys to, to be able to say that's in your starting 11. But um, look, I think Broadie's record against Australia is incredible. Um, and it's very hard to look past someone like that. Um, in the opening game of a series, um, of such a big series as well. Um, but all our bowlers, you know, have been told to prepare before every game like you are going to play because I think it's going to be a very tough ask for any bowler to play five games throughout the series. Um, and I think it will be very likely that we will have to make some changes as the series goes on, but we'll have to make those decisions when we come to the next game. Was Broad's record against David Warner a factor as well? Uh, I'd be lying if I said no. Um, <laughs> His yeah, it's just sort of one of those things, isn't it? It's like it's like Ashwin against me, I guess. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, lucky Brody's a, been an unbelievable performer um, over many years, and just I think what the Ashes brings, you know, it's just so hard to look past someone like that. So hard to look past someone like Jimmy and you know Robbo as well. Been incredible the last year for us in all conditions. So um, I'm very happy with the team that we've ended up picking. You decided to bring Moeen or request for Moeen to come out of Test retirement. What made you go for Moeen rather than a, a current spinner? Yeah, look, I mean, it was a it was a bit of a shock when we found out about Leachy. Um, you know, I was obviously for the team, but also for himself. You know, the the way in which he's progressed over the last year as a bowler and what he offers to the team is is going to be a big miss for us. Um, but look, I had to sort of think hard about who we're going to replace him with. Um, and a player like Mo, who I've seen put in some unbelievable match-winning performances, um, albeit a long time ago, was something that I sort of couldn't look past. And, you know, that was a sort of a stomach and a heart feeling rather than my brain. Um, and I've generally stuck with my gut and my heart throughout my whole captaincy so far. And you know, Mo and Ali's going to come in here and um, I'm looking at what he can offer to this team on his best days and not worrying about anything else. And finally for me, sledging has played a part in Ash's series gone by. It's, it's a bit of a psychological battle on the field often. Do you see Verbal's playing a role in this series? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it, it always does. You know, it's, it's just the occasion that Australia and England always seen. There's always something that goes out on the field. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure that no, neither team, neither no individual will back down if that ever happens. But you know, it's not something that we're going in with a, a certain game plan around using verbals against Australia. Thank you. Patrick, go ahead. Hi ben. Um, you've been around a few Ashes camps in a variety of scenarios. How does this one compare? Does it feel any different? Um, yeah, I think 
yeah, well, look, obviously we we had a week away together as a squad. Um, just reconnecting with each other as as sort of you know friends more than anything. Um, you know, we took us we like to take ourselves away from cricket and build up periods um, and just you know get that flow and that rhythm back of being around each other and. But then when we hit the ground running, obviously, you know, with our build-up days, that's that's all cricket. Um, you know, in years gone by, we've we've had sort of different ideas and different philosophies around how it might be best to prepare, not just for this uh, for the Ashes series, but for any series. And um, you know, me and Brendan will always stay very true in terms of getting together and you know spending time with each other away from the cricket field is is so so important to this group of players. Um, and yeah, obviously it's a bit different to Australia because they were playing last week. We were playing golf, so couldn't be um, couldn't be further away <laughs> from each other. Is there anything you've experienced in the way England have prepared in the past that's guided how you've led this this pre Ashes camp? Um, no, I don't think so. It's just been, as I say, like true to myself um, as a person and um, true to myself of sticking to everything that. That I've done over the last year and, and not changing because we we find ourselves in the Ashes. What do you want this series, and in particular the way England played it, to achieve for cricket in this country more widely? Um, good question. Achieve more widely. Um, if you find something that works, don't put yourself under more pressure and don't change because the occasion you find yourself in bigger than what you've been doing. For a long time before. And how's your knee holding up? Is that, are you going to be able to get through through some overs? Yeah, last three days have been really good for my confidence. Um, I've bowled every day so far and been able to sort of run in with more intensity day by day. Um, so I've got myself in a in a real good place to be able to bowl. But David Sakers obviously came in and he mentioned something to me last week down in Scotland saying if you're still bowling by the fourth and fifth test then we've done something right. Cheers, Beth, thank you. We'll go Rory and then the Barrett. Rory at the front here. And Ben, does it does it mean anything to you at all that you know you're not only taking on Australia, but you're taking on the best Test team in the world according to the ICC WTC final? Uh, yeah, I'm, look, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say it's not a huge honour to be able to to lead England out um, against Australia in the Ashes series. Um, Australia have done played some amazing cricket, and obviously that reflects in them being World Test Championship winners so um, you know not going to shy away from that and say it's you know um, not a big deal because I know it is and I know how much it means to to fans and players um, but as I said the only thing that I feel is different around this is the occasion um, and we're still going to be going out and still going to be bowling a cricket ball hitting the cricket ball and fielding the cricket ball. And, and you, you said to us back in Wellington, you're almost quite emotional, really, saying you felt disappointed that you couldn't give the team everything that you wanted to give them because of mm. your your knee. With the work you've put in, and, and you've said recently you, you feel as close to that 2019 place as you could be. Do you really, you know, w wake up this morning and feel like if England need one of those big, big days from you, you're ready to give it? Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel in a better place than I did in Wellington, and, and even before that, you know, I see every time I'm out on the field, that's what I want to try and do. But my body was stopping me from doing that. Um, but what I have done is has been able to to put myself in a place where I feel a lot more capable to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to speak speak too soon around things because you know who knows what where, where I could be at in two weeks' time. But yeah, I won't, I'll hopefully I don't have to worry about that. But if I'll worry about that if it does happen. Take a few more. Just with the mic, yes, so let's go down first, and then we'll go back, and then uh, Scott and Mel. Hi, Ben. Um, just wanted to ask you about, I suppose, how important over the last 12 to 18 months it's been for you to build connections and relationships as much as improve results. Like, is it, you know, does one follow the other? They run in parallel? Um, I feel as if I've always had a very good relationship with you know, the players in this dressing room before that. Um, I guess one of the most important things for me was to, being captain was still to be able to have the um, same trust, even though now I'm sort of making, you know, big decisions as I'm captain. Um, and just making the guys in the dressing room 
believe that that they are, you know, incredible players um, rather than anything else, and just making them believe in themselves a lot more than what they probably did before that. Um, so that was sort of the biggest thing that I wanted to, to sort of try and do is just keep that trust factor between the relationship that we had before, but also try and just make them believe that you know they were better than what they originally thought. Um, and, you know, hopefully I've done that. Um, ben, you spoke about England having a style and it's worked for you in the last 12 months. But has it reached a point, both collectively and individually, where you can just blank out the opposition plans and, and histories? A lot of you have faced the likes of Cummins and Hazelwood and Stark in the past. Uh, so have you reached that point where you just blank it out? Um, yeah, well, just as I say, as I mentioned at the start, we, you know, we've, we've found a style and a, and a way in which we want to play our cricket that is... That has been very successful, and as I say, regardless of the the opposition, you know that's what we're going to try and stick to. Obviously, conditions can dictate how you you can do that, but we will always try and adapt to the conditions, but still have that positive and sort of um, mode of which to to just go out and try and have as much fun as we can, and you know, put always looking to try and put pressure back onto the opposition, regardless of who it is. Um, you know, and you know, not facing the man, facing the ball, or vice versa, that kind of saying, yeah. Mel, go ahead, and then we'll do Scott and Channel 9 to finish. Um, ben, bearing in mind that it's five tests in a fairly short period of time, and the, the issues that you've had with your knee, when you go out there for every test, do you give 100%, or do you think, well, I'm going to operate at at about 80-90% and give myself a better chance of getting through? Uh, I think good way I give 100% of what I've got at the time. <laughs> Scott, and then some special. Ben, just wondering how much of your philosophies and your approach to cricket over the past year have come with the ashes in the back of your mind, knowing how you want to play against Australia in this series, and I guess second to that, do, is some of it also related to the way that you individually were able to play it headingly in 2019 and the freedom that you played with there against Australia? Um, I think I learned, oh God, how long ago was it? Obviously I made a statement quite a long time ago now around having wanting to have eight fast bowlers fit to be able to select from, and unfortunately, we weren't able to have a few of those bowlers to be able to select from. So, from that comment, I learned not to think too far ahead. Yeah. Last one, Channel One, go ahead. Ben, there's been plenty of questions put to the Australian side about basketball and the style of play over the last you know, 18 months. And while always respectful at times, the response has also been it hasn't been tested against our bowling attack yet. How does that kind of response make you feel? Um. Well, I think they've got to obviously, you know, give themselves, you know, their confidence within their own side around the commons that they're going to make. Um, but, you know, as I said, we've been sort of used to being asked that question ourselves as a as a playing group. Can you do it against, you know, South Africa? Can you do it against, you know, Pakistan in Pakistan? Are we going to be able to do it against Australia? So, um, yeah, I guess sort of every team is going to maybe get asked the same question around their side, around how we're playing. So. Honestly, I don't see sort of anything wrong with any comments that's been made from, you know, the Australian guys, or or anything wrong with sort of any responses that our guys have given to what the Australians have said about what they've said. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.